Right, well what we're going to talk about is the way we're using stereo graphics to try and deal with a medical condition that affects around 4% of the people in the world. It's one of the most common eye complaints that people have and you'll know what that looks like because you'll have seen kids, even if you haven't been one yourself, who are wearing a patch over one eye. And that's the main way we've had for the last 100 years to treat uh, those children. I started getting interested in computer games because I love playing computer games and then I wonder, well, how do computer games work? How can I make them better? How can I make really good games? So we've been looking at how we can use games to treat something called amblyopia. We're showing on the left here what you'd see with your left hand eye when you're wearing these stereo glasses and in the right hand channel we're showing what you'd see with your right eye and by mixing the two together, by flashing between the two, you see one image, but one eye sees one side of it and the other eye sees the other. To create our games, what we have to do is make one scene for the weak eye and one scene for the strong eye. And amblyopia involves you having one good eye, one bad eye. And what we're trying to do, on the right here, we've got the background, the main character, and on the left here, we have the character in the background again, but we have targets that you're aiming for. So you're trying to catch these stars. Now to get this, to do this, actually goes against what the stereo graphics card we're using wants to do. So behind me is Peter Laval, who's the head programmer for our project, and he can tell you about the way in which we've had to manipulate the technology so it does the work we need to do for us. When you do 3D graphics, you'll end up with three-dimensional data, X, Y, and Z coordinates that you twist around and put into 3D space, the final step does something like a camera lens to put it in a sort of a cone, the far stuff gets smaller, the near stuff gets bigger. Someone figured out this really clever idea of making their computer sneak in and at that last step pull everything apart so that they could take existing games and make them 3D, uh, make them like a 3D movie. And then as they were writing this software, they said, hey, we'll also enable this quad buffering option from the, from the 90s where you can draw different images to different eyes. Unity's set up for, for split screen stuff like this. We draw the two images over themselves and we draw them in a very specific order. And this lets us use an existing off the shelf tool like Unity to just do the stereoscopic rendering with different stuff in each eye that you really wouldn't want to use normally because it causes really horrible eye strain. What you're saying is you're using an older model for the kind of graphics because it's easier for yes. modern stuff to deal with, right? Yes, yeah, we're using the, the older or more mature Direct 3D9 stuff uh, and we're sending that to OpenGL surfaces and then OpenGL supports the quad buffering thing. This all exists because Hall had students and they knew that their students could relatively easily use Unity 3D for their coursework and they wanted the students to be able to program their Hull's VR cave. That's the University of Hull in North England then? Yeah. Yes, they have a VR cave uh, built from uh, also NVIDIA projectors and NVIDIA stuff. So we knew that their software solution to tricking Unity into doing stereo rendering would work with the same equipment we were trying to use and that meant we could take a lot of grunt work out of this project by just using Unity and wrapping it through this quadifier we call it because it adds quad buffering to an existing technol an existing thing, an existing the engine. And so, so is there an easy way of thinking what this quad buffering is doing? Is it turning it into four screens rather than two? It's sort of a pun on the f concept of double buffering. I if you're thinking of um, someone drawing a cartoon, they're going to draw a cartoon and then show you the image they've drawn. The double buffering means that the computer draws something you're not seeing and then it shows you what it's drawn before starting to draw the next thing and flipping the two images back in place. Sometimes they'll do triple buffering and they'll have one, car one image ready for the monitor to display, another one in the process of the monitor displaying, and then the computer working on the third. And Quad buffering is sort of a pun because you're adding a second screen so it looks to the software, to the developer, to the programmer, to someone like me, it looks like you've, you're drawing two images per frame and because they both have this back off-screen buffer you're drawing to that's then flipped with the front buffer, it's 
one, two, three, four, quad buffering. When we started, I, I like any good programmer, thought I could do it all from scratch. That I'm still the, sure that I could have, but it would have been harder to collaborate with other people on the team. Um, the big sort of challenge has been reducing the getting everything to just sort of line up right so that it works without touching, without fixing, without, oh, you have to hit control Q. So that would sort of be the big challenge would be because this is supposed to go into somebody's home and we, 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 they won't have a keyboard and mouse and we assume they have no technical expertise and it has to just work. And then we're doing this weird little cocktail of, so of software. It ends up being slightly frustrating. Most of what we do in universities is really good stuff, but it's never going to go out there and actually work in the real field. It never has to just never work. Never has to just work, yeah. You can always... But we have the position where it has to work. It has to be something which is as attractive as a commercial game, as fun as a commercial game, and yet still do the medical stuff that we need it to do. And so we've had a designer who's a pro designer from a games company working with us, and we've got Peter who's worked in a games company, um, we've got me who's been developing games for a very long time and sold games before, put games out there and worked with games companies as well. So we're, yeah, we're beginning to get to the point where we'll be ready to, to roll out as a games company ourselves and then he won't get any money. <laughs> so rather than Indie Game the movie, this is Indie Game the research group. Yes. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs>